here are a few uh, books that I would normally not buy. These ones were all found at a little free library with the um, exception of one of these which I bought. I never grew up reading YA horror, uh, but I do see a lot of people on, um, you know, on YouTube talk about this era of horror that they have and they really like. I uh, think about Kelsey Slime and Slashers. She talks about this. Cameron Chaney talks about this. Uh, the Bookubus talks about this. Alex from the Bookubus talks about this. Um, and they always kind of talk about how much they enjoyed this classic era of YA horror. I'm not really into that as much, but went to a little free library and I found a bunch of them, so I thought I would give them a try. So Christopher Pike, Bury Me From The Deep. Christopher Pike, The Last Vampire, Part 5. Christopher Pike, Whisper To Death. Christopher Bike, The Last Vampire, Part 3. And this one actually has like a cool little step back cover. That's pretty rad. That's pretty rad, I'm not going to lie. Pretty rad. Uh, the Last Vampire 4. And then, those, so those are all of Christopher Pike. And when I went to um, a Value Village, I found a Fear Street book called The Halloween Party. And I thought, at the very least, I... Saw the Fear Street movies. I enjoyed the Fear Street movies. Never read a Fear Street book. Not a huge R.L. Stein fan from the Goosebumps era, but I figured this is called The Halloween Party. It's got to be at least seasonal for Halloween. Might as well give these a chance. So if I when I give these guys a chance, give a few of them a read, I will uh, let you guys know. Because maybe I will have changed my tune on these particular books. This just seemed like a weird little odd of, oddity. Great science fiction from the movies. And it has a, just a collection of short stories that were at one point or another put into uh, films. So there's like the time machine. Uh, oh, sorry. I lied. This is not a collection at all. This is a nonfiction book talking about how oh how sci-fi gets adapted in this era oh that is amazing this is actually a cool non-fiction book i hope it doesn't suck i'll have to read that this is a alfred hitchcock's presents book i know alfred hitchcock himself kind of sucked and was a bad person but his movies, he's a great artist. But I, I normally don't like to do that separation of art and artist. But he's dead. So if he's dead, he can't really, he can't make any money out of this. But this is actually a short story collection under his name, uh, which I think is kind of interesting. I don't really recognize any of the authors there uh, other than Harlan Ellison. Oh, no, wait, that's Hal Ellison. Or no, no, Hal Elson. My goodness. John Lutz sounds familiar. Anyways... Moving on. Broom, 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 broom. Here's a mystery book. You probably won't see me pick up a lot of mystery books, but I just love the title. Um, the Deer Lamp. Oh, The Deer Leap. I thought this was The Deer Lamp. I picked this book up thinking it was called The Deer Lamp, and it's called The Deer Leap. Mom, oh, man, fuck this book now. Anyways, this is cool. This Martha Grimes is in Bost, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, it just looks like an old mystery. Mysteries are fun. Mysteries are normally pretty easy to just kind of pick up for reading a day. Uh, this one actually has some pretty small type, but... The Deer Leap, and not The Deer Lamp. What was I thinking? I am uh, disappointed in my reading ability. So these two are kind of interesting. This is the novelization for the 2005 King Kong in a book that I did not know existed, which is a prequel novel to the 2005 king kong you might be wondering why did you buy these one you know why i bought these i love novelizations but two i do actually really uh like king kong uh the franchise i did a lot of research for it on a research project last year as such i still kind of like to grab and collect anything that i see that has king kong on it especially if it is kind of one some of these lesser known elements of the character uh what's interesting though is this book is actually written by christopher golden 
who is now doing a lot of his own work writing. So this is like early Christopher Golden. Uh, he might have been around for a while, but I only kind of knew about him in his more modern era. And he just came out with a book, Death Road, I think? I will put in the description what it actually is, so my apologies. Uh, but yeah, these two are interesting. This one's a lot better quality than this one is. This one's kind of beat up. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. It's a novelization. Um, and yes, I will read these. I will definitely read these. <laughs> Hotter blood. Uh, <laughs> more tales of erotic horror. I don't actually own the original Hot Blood collection, but come on. Who wouldn't buy this? It sounds amazing. Especially when you look at some of the titles. Like, you got Richard Layman's in here, Ray Garten's in here, Gary Brandner's in here. Gary Brandner does not write a good sex scene, but can't wait. Oh, our boy Graham Masterton, Chet Williamston, uh, Nancy A. Collins. Like, come on. You have, like, a, a, a smorgasbord of writers here. Um, some of these are liable to be bad and silly um especially like this is kurt busiek kurt busiek wrote an erotic tale kurt busiek like wrote a bunch of 80s marvel comics i do not trust the erotic abilities of him but anyways we'll see uh but yes hotter blood cannot wait to read that um for no other reason than i think it's funny uh the right stuff never seen the movie this is a non-fiction book based on it it's not a novelization but it does have the movie poster on it. And I do, I am interested in, you know, space travel, especially in this era of the 60s. So I will definitely read that and learn, be educated. Don't worry, guys, we're just going into the last few piles. Air Force One, a novelization for Air Force One. Why? Why does this exist? I had to buy this. Get off my plane. I love that movie, and I can't believe there's a novelization and no one told me about it till now. Blood by Ron... Ron D. I was going to say Ronald D., but nope. Ron D. Uh, yeah. A vampire thing. I'm a sucker for vampires. I love myself. Some vampy boys and vampy ladies and vampy days. Vampy non-binaries as well. Touch of Fear. I'll be completely honest... I kind of bought this because the monster looks cool on the cover. And it looks like this guy's in a gladiatorial arena where he has to fight the monster. And I'm being honest, I'm sucker for those stories. I'm sucker for, like, gladiatorial arena, but they're in space and there's a weird monster. That's why I like Attack of the Clones, that ending scene. I know. That's cringe. I know. I just admit it to liking Attack of the Clones. It's fine. The Vengeance of She by Peter Tremaine. Mainly, I bought this because of Peter Tremaine, but also it's like, I don't know, an ancient evil lives around here. Peter Tremaine wrote a, like, crap ton of uh, horror books. I actually just read his book, Snow Beast? Yes, Snow Beast, I believe, um, last month, uh, which was not bad, which was not bad. It was a pretty good book. Um, even though most people don't think it's their preferred 80s Yeti tale, I liked it, okay? I liked it. Snow Beast was good. But anyways, I bought this because I like Snow Beast, so I'm interested to read what Peter Tremaine has to say about she's and their vengeances. Who knows? Who knows what's going on there? Eternity! by Tamara Thorne. This is not the cooler cover. There's like a cooler cover that has like a sign that says eternity and it's like boom, population, blah, blah, blah. And it's like crossed out with blood and then it's like an updated number. Um, but, you know, this seems like it takes place in the snow and for whatever reason, uh, it's a Jack the Ripper tale. So Jack the Ripper shows up, starts murdering people in the snow. That's cool. This is a zebra horror uh, but this is a zebra horror from way down, um, 2001. This is a zebra horror from 2001. That's why there's no skeletons on there, the covers. Because if it was a zebra horror from the 80s, you bet your butt bottom dollar there would be a skelly boy. Um, 
This was, I was amazed to find this in a little free library. This is Robert Armour Cannon Stinger. This is Stinger. This, I was really excited to find this. This is a movie, this is a book, sorry, not a movie. This is a book, although it seems like it's a book about an alien that shows up. He's here, and he's not friendly. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is my dream book. I don't know if I even like Robert Armour Cannon, but I do own... Three books by him, but I, I will find that out. But uh, this might be my 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 first one because it seems it's like a monster book. It's like about aliens and stuff, and it's set in Texas. Not that I have a thing for Texas set books, but hey, I don't know. It sounds cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm ex super excited for that. I cannot believe someone just put that in a little free library. Um, I would have paid a lot for that. The Keep. The Keep by F. Paul Wilson. I've been reading F. Paul Wilson's short story collection recently. I uh, haven't got through it all. I believe it's called Soft and Others, I believe. It might be called something else, but I, I'll, again, put the right title in there. Um, and I like his short stories, so I made sure to buy The Keep. Um, the Keep just is a monster fucking up Nazis. Hell yeah. Who does not want to read Nazis being... Uh, attacked by a monster and getting killed. Um, yeah. Heck yeah. I'm very excited to read that. Um, that's a very famous one, too. This one is fun. Dawn of the Vampire. Oh, it's a shiny cover. Ooh. Did I mainly buy it because it was shiny? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. Uh, this is Pinnacle, but this is the fun Pinnacle because it's the Rainbow Pinnacle. I like to call these uh, pride pinnacles. I don't imagine there is um, any LGBTQIA plus stuff in here, but um, I just think because it's the rainbow pinnacle, I like to call it pride pinnacle, and it's always fun. This is a vampire story, obviously. It's called Dawn of the Vampire. I don't know anything more about it than that. Cool cover called Vampire. Again, sucker for vampire tales. Everyone loves vampires, except for those who don't. Uh, here's a here's a fun book. I, 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 I'm assuming. Um, this is Night of the Demon, the novelization of that movie. Um, now, this is actually released by Severin, which is a Blu-ray company. And when they announced this, I was like, oh, I have to buy this. I did not buy the movie. The new They did a new Blu-ray restoration of this. Did not buy this, but I had to buy the novelization because the novels will go out of print fast. There's not too many of them made. They're not available digitally. Why would anyone care about a novelization for Night of the Demon? Why would anyone care about a novelization for Cruel Jaws? Don't ask me, except I guess you should because I bought them. I care. I'm super into these. I love the idea of people getting rights for like to do like a big fancy blu-ray release and then making a an unmade uh novelization with them especially if they didn't have one before this is written by brad carter brad carter also wrote the novelization for cool jaws this hat come on let's keep doing this i want to see a spookies novelization by vinegar syndrome come on we have to get on this band break and everybody everybody this is monster by jeffrey convince this one has a step back cover. It's just kind of like, it's cool. It's a step back cover. This step back cover actually reminds me of a Godzilla movie, Terror of Mechagodzilla. It kind of just looks like when they're searching at the at the, the start of that movie for Mechagodzilla. But anyways, this one is written by the same author who wrote The Sentinel. I also own The Sentinel. I have not read The Sentinel. I do love the movie The Sentinel, so I had to buy this um, because it's the Loch Ness Monster and I really hope it's not fake. Like, I really hope that this is like a really cool horror novel that actually has a Loch Ness Monster. And I figure because he wrote, you know, wrote a tale about actual ghosts and demons, he probably wrote a tale about actual Loch Ness Monsters. Please, please, please. Side note, if you have the Scream Factory Blu-ray for the Sentinel, listen to Jeffrey Convent's commentary. 
because he hates the movie and just eviscerates it. It's hilarious. And like I said, I love that movie, so I don't know why I find it so funny, but it is. Here's a few. So this is the paperback version for In Search of Frankenstein. Uh, I like the In Search of Dracula. I haven't read either, but this is by Radu Florescu. Uh, I actually own the uh, hardcover for this at, at over there, but I found this in a little free library, and I was like, oh, you know, I really would probably prefer to just kind of read the paperback because it just seems to be more my style. Uh, and it has an amazing cover, so I had to pick this up. I had to grab this. I had to grab this. Dracula Unborn, another Peter Tremaine book uh, in great condition. Like this spine. Oof. Ooh, look at that spine. Um, yeah. Another Peter Tremaine book, another Dracula book. Again, I'm a sucker for Dracula. As you can tell, because I bought a non-fiction book about Dracula, A Dream of Dracula. There are so many non-fiction Dracula books, but hey, man, I bought them. I bought them all. So, <clears throat> so I buy a lot of books from thrift books. And I want to show you two books that arrived today to really give you a comparison by how you can never tell what you're going to get with thrift books. So, Predator Forever Midnight and Alien vs. Predator. As you can tell by AVP, the novelization uh, by Mark Saracini, there are a number of things that are wrong with this. It's really ratty. It's a ratty book. It's like kind of falling apart. This one, <laughs> when I purchased it, I purchased it under the quality Very Good, which, uh, a near, a near peg. This is not very good. This is... <laughs> This is acceptable quality. So I emailed them. They, you know, to be fair, they, they gave like, uh, they immediately gave me a refund. They didn't, they didn't do any hassle about it. But the thing about thrift books is that if you buy from thrift books and you're at all interested in getting quality books, just, you know, maybe not. <laughs> uh, always go for acceptable. If you're buying from thrift books and you're just willing to read it, just always go for acceptable. Because case in point, this book, which is nearly flawless, like it is probably read once or twice, this book was rated as acceptable. And it's a it's super de duper quality. Um, it makes absolutely no sense what is going on here. Um, but yeah, novelization, Predator book. This is a Dark Horse Predator book. Um, this is part of the collection of Dark Horse Predator books. So, a little background. So, in terms of Predator, so both Predator and Alien franchises are currently in the property of Titan Books, have them. And for all of the Alien books, um, including the Dark Horse Alien books, they have all been reprinted in omnibuses. For Predator, however, they have not updated or reprinted any of the books from the Dark Horse line. As such, those books now go for crazy high prices online. Um, and I bought all of them recently. And really, between the four books, I probably spent about 200 bucks um, tracking these down. Mainly because I had to buy, like, because I'm I like I like one of these books. I have read one of these books, um, but also like I've been eyeing these books for a long time. They keep going up in price, up and up and up and up and up in price, and I just want to read them. I'm interested in reading these books, um, and I'm not able to as they continue going on. So as a Christmas present for myself, I just bought all of them that I could find. Um, this one, Predator. Forever Midnight was kind of a biatch um, to get. First off, when I first went to Thrift Books to do this to buy this book, they had miscalculated the weight. Now, if you're in America, it, this would not have mattered because they have free shipping after you go to ten bucks. For Canada, though, they weigh and they price out their shipping costs by the weight of the book. So somebody had put this down as like a super heavy book so it was going to cost me like 20 bucks to ship it 
And I was like, what is going on here? So I contact customer service and they're like, oh, whoops, that are bad. So they went in to, to redo it and redo it. And this is that book after they re-weighted it and put it back on. So like I said, again, Thrift Books has great customer service. So they, they, they got this solved for me and I got this. Um, but I also tried to buy this from a, two other places. Um, and one place, they canceled it because they found out they didn't actually have it anymore the other place shipped it but they shipped it to the incorrect address and i'm just i'm getting the runaround from customer service and they basically said come back to us in 30 days when it doesn't arrive and i'm like okay fine so i'll probably get a uh should get a refund or by some miracle they just gave me the wrong tracking number and i'm gonna end up with two of these books if so whatever they're rare i'll figure out something to do with it but anyways this one has been hard to get through and actually this is one of the ones that people say is really bad so predator fans don't like it but i don't know this one predator flesh and blood again pretty good condition um i got this online it was being on sold on ebay for 60 and then they offered to it for 40 and then i got a deal for 30 so i spent about 34 on this um, which is a very good price on this. I actually read this. My local library, for whatever reason, this is the one that I had a copy of. I asked to buy it from them, but they said they, they said no, essentially, which is fair. If they're a library, I don't have to. Um, and I just put this in my wish list on thing, thinking I would never buy this, but then they started doing business with me to do the um, back and forth. Um, this is originally only seven bucks, but, you know, oh well. But yeah, this is actually a really fun book. This is a really fun book. So that's the one I read. Uh, Predator Turnabout. This is when I bought that big collection of books, of Predator books, mainly for this book, uh, and that uh, AVP War. Um, yeah, this is... Um, I read an anthology recently that had a sequel to this story, but I haven't actually read this story. But that sequel was really, really good. So I'm cool and sorry, I'm curious to actually dive into this one. That might be my next book. This is Predator South China Sea. Legitimately one of the hardest books in all of the Predator franchise to track down. Because it's by Jeff Vandermeer. Uh, and Jeff Vandermeer is the person who wrote Annihilation, that entire trilogy. But most people know about Annihilation because of the movie that was made. Um, but yeah what yeah the guy who made annihilation um wrote a predator book that's way out of print and super hard to find uh, at least for a good price uh, i got this for about 55 us which is way more than i should be spending on a book but i you know i've been looking for this book forever and the price keeps going up like if you look on thrift books it, you can't get it for under 150 right now so it's like i have to i just had to do it so i i found this and i bought it but it's not in the best condition. I would love to get a better condition of this book, but I probably never will. So excited to finally read that book at the very least. Okay. Rounding out the last few little books. Um, this is a, a dual duo I got. The 12 Crimes of Christmas and the 12 Frights of Christmas. <laughs> Both of these arrived after Christmas. So next Christmas... I'll probably be doing something on the channel with these, reading some of these short stories. Among Mad Men. This is a book that has um, illustrations along with um, like chapters. Like it's like a weird mix.